And let's get more on this with us now on the fast line. Bill Simon, former Walmart U.S. CEO. Bill, great to have you back. Thanks for calling in. Um, you know, Courtney was saying that she was trying to figure out when the last time this happened was. I mean, what's your take on this? It just seems so unusual for Walmart to do this. Yeah, hey, I was listening to Courtney, and I was thinking the same thing. It has to be eight or ten years. I, I can't. I know. I know we did it once when I was there, and I've been gone for a long time. So, uh, you know, in, in, you know, an interperiod warning like that is 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 very uncommon for Walmart. Yeah, you call the inventory overhang on Walmart apocalyptic at one point. <laughs> um, yep. and, and I'm wondering, Bill, you know, it, it, is the worst behind Walmart in your sense? Is there a reason why you think the company insists on sticking to guidance such as it's meaning you, maintaining U.S. comp store sales growth in the back half of the year? Why are they sticking with guidance? Why are they issuing full year guidance if things have gotten away from them within a matter of weeks? Well, I actually think this is what they needed to do. Uh, you know, I think they just so owned up to it and decided to take the same decisive action that it looks like Target took already, too. And, uh, you know, as far as the, the comp sales guidance, you know, uh, I think Courtney was saying as well, the food business is over 50 percent of Walmart's business. And with double-digit inflation in food, a 6 percent same-store sales, double-digit inflation, that's pretty much where the growth is. Um, and so I, I think I think it's fairly easy to predict the same store sales when you know you're going to have eight or nine percent, uh, you know, price inflation in, in the product that you're selling. Hey, Bill, it's Tim Seymour. Uh, I appreciate the fact that that you're, you're not the analyst that, you know, what we do is we're supposed to give you the sense of whether a company's valuation has been given too much of a haircut. But when I see a company like Walmart get out in front and, and aggressively mark down on hard line and apparel, um, it, does that warrant the kind of 15 to 20 percent haircut on the value of the company um, when, in fact, you know, we are hearing about inflation, we are hearing about gas and food prices, but we're not hearing the company tell you uh, the consumer's fallen off the map. And in fact, they're, they're telling you that their sales next year um, are going to be better and higher and 6% even for the second quarter. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. To be honest with you, you know, this is what good business people do. And Walmart's in a financially secure enough position to be able to take the action that needs to do to correct the problem so that it doesn't become a multi-year issue that, 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 that you know, creates a severe impact on the long-term evaluation. Um, so, yeah, this is what you're supposed to do. You, 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 you recognize the problem, you own up to it, and you take action that's decisive and fix it. Bill, inflation hasn't been a problem in this country. I mean, and just in terms of the numbers, it's, it's a different conversation in terms of reality. But effectively, since 1970s or thereabout, a lot of these uh, a lot of these people that run companies have never seen this type of environment and they're struggling to deal with it. So I guess my question to you is, I think this can last a lot longer than people think just for that fact alone that people haven't been able to navigate an environment like this in quite some time. Well, I think you're probably right to a certain extent. Uh, inflation, you know, is something that at this level that, gosh, in this country we haven't dealt with maybe ever at this rate, at this velocity. And then you sort of combine that with rising gas, gas prices, uh, which, you know, in Walmart, you know, they, they, they analyze everything. And in the total analysis of everything, it's, it's gas prices that really drive, um, that drive the, the sales shortfall and the sales changes at Walmart because the, the consumer, their consumer in particular, is so sensitive to gas prices. But, it, you know, to me, I think it's encouraging that we're still seeing employment at the rate that it's at so you know we're able to fund the and, and maybe and maybe fund or fuel the inflation by by the high employment level so i think i think we we have to figure out you know where this cycle ends and, you know all of the all of the the, the pundits will tell you that we we're, we're nowhere near where we need to be yet on interest rates to slow the inflation rate yeah, I mean, given given the task that the Fed has on hand, and, and this is a very appropriate conversation given the Fed is meeting this week, Bill, uh, just knowing that the Fed has to do this and fight inflation and that the side effect could be higher employment, higher unemployment, excuse me, does that concern you about Walmart? I mean, on the one hand, you're going to tame inflation. At the other, On the other hand, you're going to impair the consumer by putting him or her out of work. How does this affect Walmart in your view? Well, I think with Walmart as as the nation's largest grocer um, and the best you know best price in the market on groceries, you know they're they're better positioned than most retailers to survive this and 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 to actually thrive on it. They, 
you know, their their consumer is impacted severely, but they also see an increase in consumers that trade down from the, the higher priced grocers as, as inflation continues. So, um, you know, they they built a very very broad business and and find a way have found a way through good economic times and difficult economic times to be relevant. Right. And, and last quick question, Bill. The last time you were on, I, I asked you to play a game that we like to play on Fast Money, and that would be Would You Rather. And I asked you Walmart or Target, and specifically when it comes to the ability to, to you know, weather this inventory problem, morass, shall we call it, um, better, and, and which one do you think is the better retailer here? Same question at this point, now that Walmart has come out and warned on the second quarter. Oh, man, that's so not fair. Um, <laughs> Yes, I'd, I'd rather be retired now than either one. Is that a, is that a point? Is that a good thing? So neither. <laughs> no, I actually think they're both going to be really strong. I think they're both going to recover from it well. They both have good leadership. They both have good market position, and they both know exactly what they need to do and seem to be doing it. So they'll they'll take this opportunity, both of them, to reposition themselves and and to make sure that they're relevant to their customers. If I had to pick one, if, you, if you're going to force me. I still like Target because they don't have that exposure to the lower margin food, and they have the ability to liquidate some of that inventory with a little bit higher uh, higher um, income customer. I always appreciate your candor and analysis, Bill. Thank you for joining us. You bet. Bill Simon, former Walmart, Walmart U.S. CEO. Dan Nathan, what do you say? Uh, well, somebody got tipped off to this, Mel. The most active option that was traded today in Walmart was the July 29th, this Friday, expiration, 130 puts. 13,300 of them traded, huh. a lot of them in the last hour of the day. Wow. Um, and there was only 348 open interest, and that's about $900,000 in premium. If the stock were to open uh, here tomorrow, you could see what the sort of gains would be. So I'm not a fan of unusual activity. I don't think that's a thing. I do think it's a thing, though, when people have a tip and they're trading off of it in the last hour of the day before a very unusual announcement, as you just detailed, Mel. This is not a common event for Walmart. So there's going to be more uh, to talk about as it relates to that options purchase. That is interesting because, yeah, as you said, you do not like unusual activity as any sort of indicator. but. That much in the last hour? That is eyebrow raising, Karen. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, we did see an insider trading thing uncovered today. I mean, I don't know. If you did know that, it's so dumb, it seems. But uh, just, I mean, can it be worth it? I feel like you spend more in lawyer fees alone, regardless of the outcome. So I don't get it. Excellent, excellent sighting, though, Dan. Yeah. Interesting like a PSA. Don't insider trade.